Biting into this hillside at Pui Pui, North Auckland, an excavator is bringing out earth and rock containing cinnabar, the ore from which comes mercury, one of the most valuable metals in the world today. The cinnabar ore is found in the form of a red powder running in seams through the rock. Fifty years ago, the first unsuccessful attempts were made to reach the ore by driving shafts. Today, the ore is being won and the mercury extracted. This is the only mercury mine in Australasia. The ore is taken by tramway from the mine to the reduction plant. Here, after drying, it's crushed, larger rocks being first broken under hammers. The machinery for crushing the ore and extracting the mercury was designed and built in New Zealand by one of the mine owners, Mr. W.S. Miller. To get rid of sulphur, this rotary furnace is heated to over 350 degrees centigrade by means of oil burners. The mercury is freed in the form of mercury gas. The gas is drawn up into condensers, on the top of which water is sprayed to cool it. This remarkable reduction plant is so efficient that 95% of the mercury in the ore is obtained. At the bottom of the condensers, free mercury, together with what is called mercury flour, is collected. To purify it further, the mercury flour is passed through another retort process and comes out looking like dried earth. By hoeing it, free mercury is released. Mercury is one of the heaviest metals. A bottle full weighs 76 pounds and is worth 76 pounds. Mercury is essential for war. Most of it mined here goes to Australia, making a valuable contribution to the war power of the Allies. For wartime building, prefabrication has solved a lot of difficulties. Here at the Hutt High School, it's solving another one. The Hutt city has grown, the high school role has gone up, and there's neither the labor nor the time to make additions to the brick school building. With these new prefabricated classrooms, the school will be able to carry on without overcrowding. Prefabrication is not new. Wellington's first hotel was assembled on the London docks over a hundred years ago, and newspapers of 1840 advertised portable colonial cottages. Pioneering days are past, but once more we've got to build in a hurry, and prefabrication on the large scale is the answer. With the roof on and the last nails in the walls, the new schoolrooms are ready for use. These temporary rooms are more than a wartime stopgap. When permanent additions have been built, they'll be shifted to tide some other school over an emergency. With the supply of these portable schoolrooms to draw on, there'll be an all-time solution to overcrowding. Wartime has special problems for civilians, and New Zealanders are no exceptions. There are 101 things that keep us on edge. To counter this, wartime concerts are well established in England. And in the main New Zealand cities, concerts of classical music are now a lunch hour feature. Wellington has just begun a series of such concerts. Leaving the rush and the bustle and the noise of the streets, workers enter the hall, where for an hour they can expect music, far removed from a busy city. Afterwards, they'll be back in the rush and the bustle and the noise, but this hour will be undisturbed. 